Well, it's great to be with you again. And the question I want to ask you today is, when was the last time that you went, wow, where something happened in front of you and you stood back and went, that's amazing. Maybe it's those testimonies we've heard earlier, uh, which were so good. Maybe it was Fabino's strike against Crystal Palace. Just an incredible shot from 30 yards. Made me go, wow, maybe it's just me. I wonder what's made you stand back in amazement recently. The reason I'm asking this is because John, at the beginning of his letter, we've just read these uh, just four short verses. He's going to go on and write a great letter of teaching to his church to explain how to follow Jesus. But he starts by saying, I, I was one of those privileged people who had uh, three years with Jesus where I got up every day and walked with him. And every single day, I just went, wow. I stood back in amazement at what he did and what he said and just the life that flowed from him. The words he actually uses in this passage is he says that which was from the beginning. He's saying that that which from which the whole of creation flows was in Jesus. The life that gave birth to the whole universe was inside this human being. And even though he was limited within that human frame, even though, as Paul says in his letter, that he'd given up his glory, he'd emptied himself of those external expressions of Jesus's glory as he reigns in all of in, in heaven. Within that human body, nothing could stop the life that was in him flowing out and transforming everyone. He says, I've seen it. I've touched it. I've heard what Jesus said, and now I'm proclaiming it to you. I'm testifying about it. I'm letting you know because that's what I have to offer to you. I have nothing else to offer you but Jesus because he's absolutely amazing. He's echoing what he said at the beginning of his gospel in which he describes the word of God and the life of God that had come in Jesus Christ. And he said this life that was in Jesus was the light of the whole of the human race. And he said, wherever he went, where whoever he encountered, he lit them up. He brought light and he transformed people's lives. And I'd really encourage you, maybe just as, as a simple response to us looking at John's letter and what he's saying here, read a gospel again. Read a gospel. I had, had a lovely story from one of our Alpha uh, members uh, in, in, in the last couple of weeks where she just described reading a gospel and how it just brought her joy and life. And you could see it on her face as she described it. And so I'd really encourage you, why don't you read John's gospel? In there, you've got just seven signs that he describes of, of the things that Jesus did, as well as his teaching. He talks about how he goes to a wedding with Jesus and they run out of wine and Jesus turns gallons of water into wine. He talks about how he goes to a picnic and there are five loaves and two feeds thousands of people with them. He talks about how when Lazarus was dead and they go to the, the town and Jesus says, move back the gravestone. And everybody starts to say, no, there'll be a terrible smell. He's been dead for days. But they obey Jesus and he calls Lazarus to come out and he comes out and he's alive. And Jesus has brought him back from the dead. And John recalls how he heals the paralyzed man and tells him to take up his mat and walk. And, and, he, and, he, and he walks and he records how a man who was born blind was completely unable to see for a second of his life. And yet Jesus comes, spits on some mud and puts it on his, on his eyes and he can see again. And then he talks about how when Jesus came back from the dead, how when Thomas didn't believe that he'd risen from the grave, how he let him touch his hands and how he let him put his hand in his side. And he says, believe, I'm, I'm, I'm risen from the dead. And I'm sure that's what John's saying. He says, I touched him. I saw him. I heard what he had to say. And I'm proclaiming him to you now. This is Jesus. He's the life giver. And he doesn't just give you life for each day, but he gives eternal life 
John says in these short few verses. That's what he has to proclaim. And I wonder today if you've encountered Jesus for yourself. Well, if you haven't, then I just encourage you to read one of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke or John. Well, if you've been following Jesus for some time, I wonder how you're doing in your relationship with him. John says in these verses that the result of what Jesus did is that now they, his readers, can have fellowship with the Father and with the Son, that they can know God, they can live with him, and that life that was in Jesus can be in them. And that's what Jesus wants to do for every single one of us, but it's easy, particularly in challenging circumstances, to lose sight of Jesus. So read a gospel again. Fall in love with Jesus again. Remember how amazing he is. Take a step back and, and go wow at some of his miracles. And if you're somebody that struggles to, to let that happen in your own imagination, I'd really encourage you to watch the Chosen series. It's free now. You can download an app and you can watch it yourself, even if you haven't got Netflix. And they just bring what Jesus did alive again. How he just cleanses the lepers and heals the sick and, and just how transforming he was in people's lives. So remember Jesus, look at him afresh. Let you your love for him grow again. And let that bring, as, as John says in this passage, your joy to be completely complete. Because you remember who Jesus is and you remember that he loves you and you remember what he's done for you and you remember that he's with you, whatever your circumstances. So I said, these are challenging circumstances. I promise you, I can chunter up a great Britain about the extended lockdown in Leicester. I've written to Boris Johnson. I'm exercising my democratic right. Uh, but let's be people of joy, because none of that changes the fact that Jesus is alive and he's with us and we belong to him and we have eternal life. And because we are the ones who know that, we are the ones who have a responsibility to share that with the world around us. And what John does in these short few verses is he gives us an example of choosing to tell his story, of saying, this isn't just a theory, it's not a philosophy, this is what I live, this is what I've experienced. And as we live today with the knowledge of Jesus Christ, the first place to start is to make sure that our joy in him is overflowing. Mission is never meant to be a, a to-do list or an obligation. It's meant to be a flow that comes from loving Jesus and just being overjoyed at, at knowing him. So start there if that's where you have to start today. Recover that. Let his life flow afresh in you by his Holy Spirit. But we are then called to let that flow of the Holy Spirit flow from us into others and to tell our story and to be his body on earth so that we do that which he used to do. That's the amazing thing that we're called to do. So today I just want to share something about telling our story. And here's the really good news. It doesn't have to be a perfect story. It really doesn't. This is about focusing people's attention on Jesus, not on us. And actually, if we think that we actually have to have got everything right before we, God can use our story to touch somebody else, then we've misunderstood it. It's often much more authentic and real. If we tell the story of, Do you know, I was really struggling with this and I'd got this wrong and this wasn't great. But what happened was Jesus did this. And so it could be a story of really struggling with mental health, and yet underneath it all the peace of God holding you and carrying through this, this lockdown period. It could be the testimony of you praying over your children during this time and just seeing the difference that Jesus answering your prayers has made. It could be God providing for you in your work, in your finances, um, in, in solving problems that have come about during this time. Or it could be the story of you coming to know Jesus that somebody else needs to hear. But it doesn't, it mustn't be a perfect story because we're not perfect. It needs to be a real story. But the key to it 
is focusing on what Jesus has done for you. Not focusing on you, but just saying, here's the difference Jesus makes. He's the life giver. And without him, I don't know where I'd be. Earlier in the lockdown period, I decided to film uh, my testimony. I filmed it outside in Knighton Park. I put it on my uh, 800 views. People must be really bored. And my friend Simon watched it. I haven't spoken to Simon. We've sort of kept loose connections through Facebook over the years. I was at school with him in secondary school. And he wrote and said, what you shared, John, reminded me of my faith when I was a little boy. What my grandmother used to say and it's brought me back to God. That's the power of a testimony. Because we're not pointing us people to ourselves, we're pointing people to Jesus. And we're giving them hope that when they hear our story, what happens is, is that they hear that if that could happen for John, then that could happen for me. Because I'm like him. And so they begin to have the possibility presented to them that Jesus could do the same for them. And whether it's our testimony that we speak of, or whether it's prayer that we offer and we minister it and God heals somebody, or whether it's peace that we pray over somebody to restore them, uh, whether it's a touch of God, whether it's a prophetic word. Today, as we have fellowship with the Son, the life-giving Son, Jesus Christ, his presence in us should flow out of us like streams of living water, he described, and touch other people. So my encouragement to you now is, if you've got that sense of joy and that life that you've got, then pray now for an opportunity to share something of a story of Jesus has made to other people, to bring them hope, to bring them life. Maybe you want to record that story like I did and share it on social media. Maybe you want to just pray and ask God, who is it that I could share something with? Maybe you could think, what's, what's the clearest thing that, that Jesus has done for me during this lockdown period? What's the main difference he's made? Okay, and then ask the Lord, who could I share that with? And just as John was really intentional in writing this letter, writing it down, then my challenge is be really intentional about doing that and seeing how people respond. Let me pray for us. Lord Jesus, you are the life giver. We praise you for your life that's come into our lives. We pray that you would allow that life to rise up again in us in the Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, that you would enable us to, to love you afresh, to let that joy overflow in us as we remember who you are. Cause us to fix our eyes on you, and give you our attention during this time so that we remember that you're with us and you, the amazing life giver, are at work within us. And then, Lord, call us to those around us who we could share you with. Give us a story to share. Give us a, a person that we can share it with, that we might be those who openly share our lives with others and allow you to flow into their lives. Through us, we pray for your glorious sake. Amen.